Just east and northeast of London is the county of Essex. And aside from the reality TV stereotypes, Essex is home to some incredibly picturesque towns. But what are its prettiest? To establish this, I visited them all personally, and my conclusions are presented to you in this top 10 list. Just to add that cities are included for consideration in this, which may come into play later. As a disclaimer, this is neither a social commentary nor a guide on where's nicest to live. It is simply a beauty contest, judged by yours truly. So let's get straight to it. Number 10. Our first entry comes from a historic town whose name derives from Healthy Place in Old English, a town with a thriving wool industry in the medieval era. It is Halstead. Whilst Essex isn't generally known for its altitude, Halstead's town centre features a comparatively steep high street from the River Cone up to St Andrew's Church dating from the 14th century. And owing to some commendable town planning, the church is situated in such a way as to be seen without obstruction in four directions. This factor alone helped Halstead beat off some stiff competition for a spot on this list. Number 9. Now here's a coastal town with a difference. You'll find it located just west of South End on Sea as part of a continuous urban development. But this is a different animal altogether. The town is Lee on Sea. Although a more accurate name would be perhaps Lee on Muddy Estuary, but that doesn't sound as inviting, I guess. The history of Leoncy is punctuated by the 13th century St. Clement's Church in the centre. Since the medieval era, it was deemed a fishing town of national importance, as well as a shipbuilding town, supplying at least six ships that fought against the Spanish Armada in 1588. Of particular note is its high street, lined with characterful old fishing cottages harking back to its past. Number 8. And now to a true seaside town. You might think Essex, with its long coastline, would be abundant with beach resorts. However, the landscape here is so marshy that only a small handful actually exist. And out of this handful, one of them stands head and shoulders above the rest. It is Walton on the Nays. With the third longest pier in the UK, and colourful beach huts stretching all the way to the neighbouring town of Frinton-on-Sea, you'd be forgiven for asking, well, what's the catch? But a walk through the town centre reveals no such cracks in the seams that afflict other seaside towns. In fact, it even has something to boast that not even Brighton can claim, a sandy beach. So, what's not to love? Number 7. Here's a free piece of trivia for you. What's the smallest town in the UK? Well, by area, it would appear to be this very town. A town that stares down Suffolk from its position on the south bank of the River Stour. It is Manningtree. The town was the base of the infamous Witchfinder General, Matthew Hopkins, during the 1640s. In the 18th century, plans to turn Manningtree and neighbouring Mistley into a spa resort fell through though it did leave the town with a pleasant vestige of Georgian houses along the high street. Number 6. By sheer coincidence, we now jump from Essex's smallest town to its largest. In fact, it's not even a town anymore, as in 2022 it was upgraded to a city, which is all the more fitting, as it is often cited as Britain's first city. To the Romans, it was Camulodunum. To us... It's Colchester. It would take too long even to summarise Colchester's history, so in short, I'll just outline three major landmarks. First, there's the Bolcohen Gate, believed to date from the 2nd century, and said to be the best preserved Roman gateway in the country. Then there's Colchester Castle, built atop the ruins of the Temple of Claudius. And of course, there's the old siege house, with actual preserved bullet holes from the 1648 siege of Colchester during the English Civil War. All this among a fine array of authentic Tudor houses clustered together, 
the likes of which you simply won't find in any other big town or city in the country, with the possible exception of Norwich. But for that, you'll have to wait till the Norfolk episode of this series. Number five. We now jump from Essex's oldest settlement to its second oldest, and one that is synonymous with sea salt. It is Malden. When the East Saxons, from whence the county's name is derived, settled here, their existence was fraught with Viking attacks, including the Battle of Malden in 991 AD. This didn't keep the locals down for too long, who, by the time of the Doomsday Survey of 1086, were already harvesting salt from the Blackwater estuary. Malden boasts over 200 listed buildings, including a handful with Grade 1 status, among these are the Church of St. Mary, the Church of All Saints, and the Tower of the former Church of St. Peter, which now forms part of a library. And if that wasn't enough, the Hythe Quay is home to a stunning collection of barges, which serve as a reminder of the town's industrial past, which once saw up to 2,000 boats operating from here. Number four. And now to a town named after a byproduct of a type of crocus, a market town since 1141, Saffron Walden. Located in northwest Essex, it sits in a secluded spot just away from the mainline train tracks between London and Cambridge. Speaking of which, just four out of the ten entries on this list even have their own railway station. But I'll save my beaching rant for another time. As for the architecture of Saffron Walden, it boasts Essex's largest parish church, namely St Mary's Church, perched atop the highest points in the town. Then there's the Elizabethan era Cross Keys Hotel, which, according to a legend, was built around an oak tree, which was never even felled. And something quite special in the form of three neighbouring Grade 1 listed houses on Church Street. To be clear here, finding three Grade 1 listed houses in a row is pretty much the architectural equivalent of drawing a royal flush. And yet, we'll see another example of this in our number two entry. But first, number three. Here's a town whose nearest railway station is Stansted Airport. Five miles east of quote-unquote London Stansted Airport is the town of Great Dunmo. And while the public transport may not be great in Great Dunmo, what is great is the architecture. Every building in the town has its own character, and you'll not find a single blight on the views. The town is host to an ancient tradition alluded to in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, namely the Dunmo Flitch Trials. This goes all the way back to the 12th century, and takes place every four years to this day. In short, a couple's fidelity is tested by a jury of six local bachelors and six local maidens who must be convinced that for a year and a day they've never wished themselves unwed. If successful, they parade down the high street and are granted a flitch of bacon, i.e. half a pig cut in half lengthways, literally bringing home the bacon, if you will. There's nothing like a good ancient British tradition. Number two. Aesthetically, we're into fairy tale territory now. This entry makes it a hat trick for Essex's northwestern district of Uttlesford. The town is Thaxted. During the medieval era, Thaxted was a producer of cutlery. In fact, it was this trade that helped to fund the town's iconic guild hall dating from the 15th century. The guild hall is, of course, grade one listed. But then, so are three out of its four neighbouring addresses along the cobbled street leading up to the church. And speaking of which, the Church of St John the Baptist dates back to the 14th century and is without doubt one of the finest in Essex. The buildings surrounding the church are none too shabby either. Heck, there's even a windmill in the town for good measure. And yet, as hard as it is not to award the top spot to Thaxted, there is one final town that has to be seen to be believed. And so we come to... Number one. Now, the phrase hidden gem gets banded about like confetti these days, 
but in this case, it truly applies. Our top entry lies halfway between Braintree and Colchester. It is Coggershall, a medieval wall town that was once home to an abbey. Coggershall oozes with history, with nary a modern building in sight. A number of buildings deserve individual mention. Firstly, the Grange Barn dates from the 13th century. This was the abbey's tithe barn, i.e. where farmers gave one-tenth of their produce to the church as a tax. Then there's Paycock's House, dating from circa 1500 as a wedding present for the son and daughter-in-law of John Paycock, a wealthy cloth merchant. And another product of the wool industry is the 15th century church of St. Peter ad Vincula. On the lighter side, from around the 17th century, legends arose attesting to the alleged daft nature of the locals, leading to the phrase Coggershall job, or perhaps Coxall job in local dialect. Examples of this include an instance where the church only chimed 11 times at noon, upon which the townsfolk rode to the neighbouring town to collect the missing chime, or when a cow was winched up to the roof of the church in order to eat the grass growing there. Say what you will of the locals of old, this town's beauty is enough to leave anyone dumbfounded. And those are my picks for top 10 prettiest towns in Essex. Do you agree or disagree? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. This is my fourth county I've covered so far. The plan is to get round them all, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see the series develop. In any case, I'd like to think this video gives a new meaning to the phrase, the only way is Essex. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.